Hey everybody, Adam Savage in the back stacks of Prop Store in London with Stephen Lane. Hey Adam. And we are going to a place no man has ever gone before. We have two Star Trek spacesuits here. Yeah, we do. And I mean, they're kind of amazing. I love we have undiscovered country here. But this, this is Spock. This is the Spock suit that I think of when I think of Spock. Yeah, no, this, this is a wonderful suit, isn't it? I mean, it's so indicative of that era. First of all, just from a color perspective. Yeah. I mean, we're right there, aren't we, in the 70s and early the, 80s. Right. We've got the, well. browns the browns and the oranges. And the oranges. It's, <laughs> it's Halloween every day in the 1970s. <laughs> That's right. Car interiors were this color. <laughs> yes. Household stuff was this color. Your kitchens was like this. So I think it's you know it's very relative to that as well. But it's it's a marvelous piece of design, and it's and it's interesting the way that it's formed together with both the front pack and the backpack there, you sort of weld it into shape there, aren't he you? He really, really is, and it creates this very interesting stance that is quite unique in your collection. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't often see that. There's normally they're sort of trying when it when it work when you see the designs and the, the finished articles of space, it's, it's all about mobility, isn't it? It's yeah. like that's almost the opposite of that. You know, like that's it, you're in, you're not getting out of that. And there's no head movement there either, is it? The helmet no. is locked in place. So any of the movement that you're gonna get is is from from Leonard Nimoy inside just moving his head around. I, I was looking at this piece up close and kind of peeling back some of the fabric. I noticed that all of this orange is custom dyed to match the color and you brought out, may I bring this up? Yes, yeah, of course. You yeah. brought out, this, is this the original costume yes, design? Yes, yeah. now I believe the costume designer was Robert Fletcher, so I don't know whether this is one of his sketches okay. or whether it's just uh, one one from his department. Oh, from Apogee, got From it. Apogee, yeah, yeah from, from his department. Um, so you see some of the original sort of wow. uh, photocopies of the uh, of the full suits there as well. But these actually came up in the prop store auction last year. And I was just like, what? And there was out of Los Angeles, like, I've got to buy that and get it framed and put it on the wall next to this. But you it's can an amazing, I mean, just to, just, just, just that, right? Like the, it, I, working in film is all about translation. Yeah. And it is such a beautiful thing to see these drawings and see what comes out of it, even down to little details like this, that they've really worked hard to put in the little, yeah, yeah, yeah. And interesting enough here, it looks like, I mean, maybe it was going to be blue and orange at one point. Yeah. You know, it certainly looks like it was blue under this as well. And then it's been darkened down, hasn't it? To possibly the uh, Might have been the a meeting. Yeah, we could have right? been sitting there. Oh, no, no, we're going to go darker with that. So I think that sort of works out pretty well. Yeah, they yeah, have but, a little orange call out, spice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, greater shape oh my gosh this is wonderful yeah what an amazing artifact to have with this yeah 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 and this i mean the suit itself is is really incredibly basic in construction again i think it's sort of relative to the era um i think um you know we've seen this sort of evolution of the way that these things are constructed today but uh, it also has the holes as we were just talking about off camera there that yeah on either side so. i was wondering what those are and then i realized they're the flying rig <laughs> that's right? it it's the flying rig so when he's floating in space that's exactly how they're going to do it and you can see that's almost an afterthought as well i mean that's yeah. not that's not stitched in there and designed into that, no they it? were Someone's like going, going, uh, <laughs> well and to, to be clear i think people don't realize that when these guys are wearing a climbing harness it is this custom piece of fitted leather and sheet wool that goes around their torso and holds them with these two pivots here in at the center of their gravity so that they can appear totally weightless. That's it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, which is uh, which is ingenious, but again, it's an afterthought for what they were doing here. Interestingly enough on this, I think there's really very, very little in the way of functionality. I can't remember whether there used to be some light functionality. Yeah, I, feel, I didn't I, see any lights at all. I thought no. that these here on the helmet were lights, but they're no, just yeah, little they're, brass. They're brass, things. so it looks like it's gonna catch the light to maybe look like it's yeah. light. The inside, as you can see, is incredibly basic. If I remember yep. rightly, I feel like oh, I haven't done this for a long time. In fact, that looks like it's been hot glued down now. But this here yeah. actually uh, oh. came off yeah. there completely in its entirety. And um, I've speculated over the years as to whether or not there's some sort of point of view shot here from you know Spock looking oh. through the helmet or something or whether it's something as basic as, look, I don't see any fans in this construction of this. There's no ventilation in here. So maybe they so had someone just, with a blow dryer there yeah, just this keeping is just cool. steaming up, or sure. you know, we've got to get some air circulating. And he's a, quite a tall guy. If you think that's not going to be in shot, then they're allowing fresh air to come yeah. in there. Or you know, any air at all, I suppose, ultimately. Um, I love the uh, the ribbing here. And the ribbing, I mean, the ribbing goes back to the very origins of spacesuits to sci-fi covers. Yes. Uh, in the 40s and 50s, you know, NASA knew that there would be convolutes on their spacesuits, and they're making these gestures. But as Norm was pointing out, we were looking at this earlier, how these go from thick to thin. There's a real dynamism to how this is constructed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they're really allowing for the fact that this 
has to have a practicality to it at the same time because, of course, if that was continuous right the way through there, then you're going to be sort of mm -hmm. walking around more like a Michelin man, aren't you, than, than anything else. I think the gloves might be my favorite part of this suit. Looking at them up close, all of the patterning done around here, all the variegation done, they've just done a tremendous amount of art direction with such simple materials. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right the way down to the fingertips here, actually, isn't it? It's yeah. all the way on here, all the way down. I mean, right every time I look at this, I feel a little sorry for the sewers. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you guys really brought it. Yeah, there's there's work to be done there, isn't there? Um, yeah. And then these are like more like spats than boots. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, when I when I acquired this particular costume and this came out um this was during the period uh post the 2006 paramount cbs auction that took place at christie's right and following that uh, a company called it's a wrap had an auction that ran for a couple of years which, which was all the content that essentially they didn't feel was substantial enough to put through the main sale oh, okay. at christie's and so this actually came up through that and unfortunately the boots, as we talked about so many times before, were gone. Who knows where they ended up? But thankfully, it came with these spats. The so. spats are absolutely perfect. Yeah. The other thing about this suit is its condition looks almost brand new. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's it's incredible condition. And I think that's thanks to the fact that when when Christie's had that settled, you know, the majority of that content was being pulled out of the archive, being pulled out of deep storage. Yeah. And it's unlikely that it had gone out in any other productions. I mean, look, it's, it's so specific, isn't it, to yeah. both character and, and film, that it's not like it would have had any opportunity to sort of marry into anything else. So it probably never went out on rental. So, yeah. you know, it wrapped, probably went into a box and then, then, then has come here subsequently. The shape is just amazing. I love that it's not symmetrical. This hollow chest thing is a very, it's not like the kind of hero stuff that Hollywood churns out these days. And yeah. yet it does have this hero aspect to it. It just, it, its uniqueness feels really awesome. Yeah, am I right in thinking that in a later film they did actually reuse a very similar style to this, but it didn't have a handle on here or something like that? Doesn't I doesn't am not to... the one to ask. No? I do not have the encyclopedia knowledge of Star Trek spacesuits. Yeah. That's you'd have to ask my friend Ryan Nagata. Right. He, he's the one who's got yeah. all those yeah. knows where all those bodies are buried. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they did in the in the subsequent film to this. Potentially, it was uh, they used something very similar, but just with minor modifications. I found a vent. Oh, okay. So and oh, it's practical, is it? You can tell me what that vent is. It's cool shade. Oh no, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, That's me. so cool shade. <laughs> cool shade is a UK screen that is both the panels on a Tie Fighter, right, and it is the vent. Uh, screen on the Millennium Falcon. Right. And is one of the hardest things to find. I just love Well, there's a, there's a pair of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I, Sorry, have, a, I have a six inch square of original cool shit that I collected years ago. And it's, it's just, it's one of the more precious little bits I've found. That's object. very cool. Very cool. Is there much on the back here we want to talk about or have a look at? I think um, it's a little, no, we'll probably see if we can just pivot them around here. I think it's worth having a look at the back because it's so infrequently seen on film, isn't it? There we go. And again, you know, Sorry, there's this. Over here. There's this aspect of, of you know, you've got the basic form of the suit here, but then they've drawn in these details and they've gone in and modeled oh, them yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, actually down the side there, isn't there? Look and then that. these little, yeah, and these little call-outs here, they're all, like, oh, they're, they're, that is directly that. This, this is and someone that, copying yeah. that precisely. That's, that's amazing, isn't right? it? Right, and that's, that. like... That is really awesome. Come on in. So do you recognize any of these? Because, I mean, this looks like kit stuff as well, doesn't it? Or, it does. It does. Um, oh, wow. I don't recognize stuff right off the... Oh, that's a jerry can from uh, Tamiya model. That's, a, yeah, probably one twenty fourth scale. Uh, that I definitely recognize from something. This is all over ILM models, this right. little box. And, you know, your classic plastrop hemispheres, those are always somewhere. Of course. Um, <laughs> it goes without saying. Oh, yeah, probably tank treads going on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got it. It's great, isn't it? And, and that kind of that kind of investigation is always one of my favorites. Oh, that's interesting, actually. Uh, I haven't looked at this before, but there's actually a light bulb inside the corner piece. Have you got the same oh, on that yeah. side as well? So there must be some uh, some, some, some element of it. Of yeah, that, 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 yeah, there we go. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a little incandescent there. bulb in there. Yeah, a tiny little thing. thing. So there, there must be a must be a power unit or an old power source, I should think, in, built into the into the backpack somewhere. And again, but, its condition is insane. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. In fact, it's interesting because there's, there's almost more detail on the back of this than there is on the front of this, isn't there? So yeah. you sort of you're looking at it like that, and it's 
this is this is so much plainer and sort of less detailed on it. But, I'm also I swear look, the 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 yeah it's an amazing piece. Okay, I think we can't we have to move on to the undiscovered country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sure thing. this is undiscovered country is the last Kirk film. Am I right? It's the last original series Star Trek film. Yes, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, um, I'm like you. I'm not quite as hot on my uh, trek as I am on my Star Wars, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, no, this this is a great piece. Again, uh, I think the assassins they play a reasonably significant role in this movie, don't yeah. they? I remember there's a shot in the film where maybe the boots are just sort of floating through space or floating. They, they, that's right. They they go into a weightless environment or something. The boots are floating or something like that. And so you see the underside detail on yeah. the boot and things, but. Yeah, I love this for this for the simplicity and and the way that the helmet really shines through on this as much as anything else. The helmet shines through, and the, the, you're right. There's so much simplicity to the detail that is not really obvious. I mean, th this is just an electrical connector. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's somebody that. you can see the little pin releases for connecting the electrics, and then they've sewn in these pockets for just some little bits of Tigon tubing. Yeah, uh, and again. It, there's no law. There's nothing lost by doing that. It's no. actually a, a flexible, easy unit to make, and the costume itself is really compelling. I love this um, center chest detail. Yeah, what is that exactly? Is it just some sort of? Oh, it's like copper. It's yeah, it looks like. Uh, well, the top looks like some perforated plate, but underneath, yeah. Yeah, not too sure what's going on there. Uh, I, th I think it's cool if we actually if we turn this to one side yeah. a little bit. Just pivot this around. Uh, so first of all, I mean, look at the side of the helmet. And oh, I think what? that is a earbud. It's the earbud yeah. things, isn't it? <laughs> the, the, the old Walkman thing where you used to wind the exactly. cable inside it. I mean, that's it, isn't it? Right there. Yep. I mean, there's, there's very little done to actually disguise that at all. And the, uh, the neck ring here is literally just uh, six mil neoprene uh, glued in strips yeah. onto the thing. Yeah. It's, a little bit of ventilation there. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, got, Buzz. Somebody's got, I can't breathe in here. Zip, 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 zip. And then touch it in. And then, and then interestingly enough, you know, again, I hadn't really noticed this before we started looking at it today. A bit of product placement on right on the back of the helmet. Oakley. Well. Oakley man. I was wondering about that. I don't think there's product placement in any other Star Trek film. No, no, I'm not familiar. I wonder whether, I mean, because Oakley were really all about shades during this era. So I'm just wondering whether or not, you know, oh, would they have the had blue, anything to do You wonder yeah, if the blue visor yeah, bring might that not have again. been. An Oakley. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering whether this could be the Oakley element to that, and they've done it as part of a product placement thing or something like that. I don't know. Uh, right, so if I had to hazard a guess, here's the story I'm telling myself in my head: is at the time they were doing this, it was really hard to have a perfect blue vacuum metalization, and Oakley helped them out. Right. It would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, that, that's literally how the shades were being done at that time, weren't they? Right. And so, uh, yeah. And then I would imagine Oakley would say, we've got to have a logo. And the yeah. Star Trek people would say, yeah, we're going to make it gray on gray. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to told them that. We satisfy the contractual <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll requirements. It. <laughs> it's, yeah. No one's going to be able to see it. Yeah. Uh, and it even has a name tag, Sam No. There we go. Yeah, because um, I think there were just two two dressed like this. I think there were like the the two of them together, the pair of them. I, th I seem to recall again. It's it's not a film that I've watched for a little while, but uh, yeah, I, I've seen some of the the sort of because these are sort of like radiation protection suits or something like that as well. Yeah. I think they're dual purpose. So I think maybe the suits turn up in in other instances, but it's the only time I'd actually seen one of these turn up with the helmet as well. And I was like, as soon as it rocked up, I was like, yeah. Definitely. Star Trek is one of the series that has the widest variance of spacesuit designs. I mean, from those original ones with the mesh, right? Yes, yeah, that crazy yeah. All mesh the way back. Yeah. from the original <laughs> series. Um, no two Star Trek spacesuits have anything to do with each other, and I really appreciate that from an art direction standpoint. Yeah, it's crazy, really, isn't it? Because you think that there will be a degree of continuity, like you see with so many other franchise films, like you know, Batman for the bat suit, or, right? Or you know, Star Wars, where you're seeing a, the evolution of a storm suit or something yeah. like that with the space suits no it's just going to jump from film to film well and it speaks very deeply to the expansive universe that star trek inhabits yes. right they, each movie wants you to know you are part of you are a small part of a huge thing and the variance in spacesuit design is totally communicating yeah that. it must be great for the designers to actually be able to step into that frame and say well you know what we've got a reasonably free reign here you know there's going to be some nods yeah. you're going to have the starfleet emblem somewhere or something like that but other than that we can run free where did you, how did you acquire this? This one came up at auction as well, actually. Okay. Yeah, so this, this, you know, I'm really looking for sort of spacesuits wherever they might come up. Sure. And some of them are coming directly from the studios because we've got great relationships with the studios themselves. Some of the higher companies. And then, you know, really, some of it's just really random. They just turn up at auction. Amazing. Stephen, thank you so much for walking me through these two. They're just, just that one, I'm just, yeah, I can't. Cool, I tell you, I think someday I may try and replicate this in foam. 
Oh, it yeah. is a perfect foam build to do that upper, upper heart, upper torso. Well, come back and see us. We'll help you out with the Oh, I bit. totally will. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.